For the first time, we're introducing 16 composite fan blades to the G9X. We're trying to give our customers a more efficient engine. To do that, we've got to push the limits a little bit more than we have before. Hi, I'm Jen DiMasio, Managing Editor of Defense and Space for Aviation Week. And I'm Bill Sweetman, Senior International Editor for Aviation Week. We're here to talk about missiles. In an uncertain world with unrest in the Middle East, uncertainty in Eastern Europe, and problems in the Pacific, there's a, a whole array of missiles on the market right now, and Bill's going to tell us about some of them, starting with the Meteor and some of the challenges that uh, arise when you're trying to integrate them onto a fighter jet like this Dassault Rafale. This is a Navy version of the Rafale. They have a, a very important um, air defense and air superiority requirement. Um, so uh, one of the steps they're taking is to um, uh, update the Rafale fighter, uh, which is all still being produced, but very modern. But they're going to update it yet again with the uh, Meteor missile. There's one back there um, on, the, on the fuselage pylon, and there's one here on the, on the nearest wing pylon. Um, Meteor is different from other air-to-air -air missiles because it actually has an air breathing motor, um, a ramjet engine, a combination rocket ramjet, um, and that allows it to um, adjust the power of the engine during its flight. Most missiles have a boost stage and then they glide to the target. Uh, the Meteor flies under power all the way to the target. Um, this makes it much more maneuverable, especially in what we call the end game. That kind of maneuver reduces the effective range of a plane rocket-powered missile. So Meteor's been under development for a long time. Um, it's just entering service uh, on, the, on the Swedish Gruppen fighter. It will follow up around 2018 um, on, on the Rafale. Also, that's not the only weapon on board this aircraft. Um, there is, in fact, a gun under there. Um, the, the gun barrel is, is concealed because of, uh, to reduce the radar cross-section. Um, there's an Exocet anti-shipping missile on the centerline pylon. Further outboard on the wings, um, two versions of the French Mika, which has been in service for some time. One very unusual feature about how Rafale uses Mika is that the infrared seeker heads remain active during flight and um, actually are part of the fighter's sensor system. That's why you know, the issue of integration, of testing, of making sure that the weapon works on the aircraft is so important and a big, um, often quite expensive and difficult challenge on a fighter jet. Well, let's go take a look at some more missiles, Bill. Yeah, okay. We've come over here to the MBDA chalet to look at surface-to-air missiles. So let's go take a look, Bill. Okay, let's go. So here we are at the surface-to-air version of the Mika missile. What can you tell us about that, Bill? This is actually part of, a, a, of an expanding trend in the, in the missile business, which is to use the same weapon for multiple applications. Um, the Mika is um, not only part of the armament of the Rafale, um, but it's also part um, of this uh, ground-launched air defense system. And there is also a ship-launched version. Um, MBDA is doing the same thing with a, a, a different family of missiles called Common Anti-Air Modular Missile um, that's, in, uh, that's under development for the UK. The idea here is to take the very high cost of developing a new missile and uh, apply it to a larger range of applications. The cost of developing these systems is pretty high and uh, the, 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 the market for air-to-air -air weapons is quite small. There's actually a bigger market for surface-launched ground or sea-launched weapons. So here we are with a set of loitering missiles called uh, the HERO series. Yeah, these are from a new family of weapons um, from a small Israeli company, um, quite newly formed. These do look like small unmanned air vehicles. They've got propellers, um, just a little booster engine to launch, but they don't have a rocket engine. All of them work in the same way. Um, they're launched into the target area. The operator has a live video picture of what the, what the missile can see. So you can choose your moment to attack. And because they don't have a very large warhead, the, the risk of collateral damage is, is, is reduced. As you see, they're quite simple technology. They have um, uh, what are almost like big model aircraft engines. The propellers are still made of wood. These are becoming quite widely used in, in Israeli service and um, are getting, beginning to be exported around the world. So from air-to-air -air missiles to surface-to-air missiles and new technologies and loitering munitions, Bill, you've really shown us the waterfront. Thanks very much. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it um, underscores a point that the new platforms, a new aircraft or a new ship, uh, is, is so expensive that it comes along once in a decade or so, a decade or more, for even the, even the wealthiest customers. So uh, re-equipping and rearming what you've got is the way to go these days.